have here is a WASM-based architecture. And we have a front end that is using 3JS, so it is WebXR compatible. So this can be run, 3D can be run uh, in VR or in the browser or what, anything uh, XR compatible. That front end is talking to three WASM engines, WASM Edge, WASMIR, and WASM Time, sending game events to them. That's using Kafka, the REST API. The back end is using Spring Boot to, and the, oh, the uh, Kafka API in Java to pick up those events to do the AI for the opponents and to send the result of that back to the front end to have it rendered. And so that's the messaging flow using WASM and Kafka and Oracle Database. And then we are showing uh, data using the same data being accessed with SQL via REST. So Oracle REST endpoints are uh, doing SQL operations to insert player information. And then the leaderboard is using the Mongo API, again, against the Oracle database, because you can use, you know, in the case of Kafka, you can use Kafka API against the Oracle database and transactional event queues. You can use the MongoDB API against the Oracle database for Mongo. So that's what we're showing here is the, the WASM engines working with the Oracle database and the compatibility of the Oracle database with not only Oracle stuff like AI and spatial, etc., but actually Kafka APIs and MongoDB APIs as well. So Swiss Army knife adaptability type thing. So that's what we see here is player information, leaderboard, and the runtime status of our different WASM engines. And so when we go to play the game, you can view it from two different angles. You use the arrow keys or WASD for movement, and then you press C to go from this bird's eye view to a first person view. So the game now is, is you know, V1, uh, so nothing special, but all the functionality is there. There are two opponents. One opponent has a, uh, an aggressive AI strategy, and the second has a defensive, so that one will kind of just stay off in the corner and try and avoid conflict whereas the other one will try and chase you down. Uh, and so it's quite easy currently, but I'm going to add to that. The, the main point I'm trying to show here is what I mentioned, using WASM and the adaptability of Kafka and Mongo with the Oracle database. I just want to go through this very quickly to give you the idea. There will be a blog with full details on this that I will post as a description in this video and also on the GitHub repo, which is this repo right here. And I'll put this repo in the video description as well. So you can get the source here. I'm just going to do a very quick source walkthrough. So again, we have from top to bottom, we have the um, 3JS client for the front end that is speaking with the three WASM engines, uh, WASM Edge, WASM Ur, WASM Time, and the Spring Boot engine. And they're all connected um, to the Oracle database to do all the various communication as far as uh, messaging, which is done via Kafka, both REST and the Java Kafka API, and data manipulation, which is done through REST and SQL, and the MongoDB API. All this stuff against the same data, and that's uh, accomplished with the JSON duality feature uh, in the Oracle database. So real quickly, going from top to bottom, we have our components over here. This is the 3JS front end I mentioned. The main source file there to look at is game, um, game JavaScript class. And you'll see here the construction of the messaging for the different moves. So you pick, when you join the game, you pick what WASM engine you want to use and then the two that are left over are what is used as for your opponent's uh, WASI cycles. And so what we see here is, um, you know, creating the, the, the move and then 
um, sending that over to the WA the WASI engine that you choose. Okay, um, and then Spring Boot is doing the AI to send the messages as far as what your opponents are doing. So that is the front end. Um, for all of these, there's an environment file um, that you put, you know, a few values in. Some of these are probably redundant. I can get them fine or tuned, but um, you just put these values in to run um, the application. And most of these are just things like ports that can stay as they are. So there we go. That's the configuration for it all. This is the front end. Then let's go down and look at the three um, WASM engines. So first we'll look at WASM Edge. WASM Edge, I build a little differently. I actually build this as a Docker container and it's overkill because I'm using an Ubuntu image just, you know, because it's convenient for other things. But uh, this is how it's being built. Uh, so you can, you know, you can use this anywhere, obviously, it's a Docker container. Um, and let's look a little bit at the cargo file. So this is written in Rust. And um, the kind of the key point here is to look at the, the crates that we're using for communication. So we're using Tokyo and Hyper to do the, um, the listening and sending of messages. And yeah, so that's the long and short of it. Again, this is the Docker file um, where we're installing the dependencies, installing Rust. We're using WASI P1 here and building the source code. So like I say, I want to go through, through this quickly. That's the gist of WASM Edge. Moving on to WASMR. In here, uh, WASMR is a little unique because you do need to sign up for the WASMR cloud service, although you can run the services locally, which is what I'm doing here, and you don't have to pay any money, but that's how it works. So you, looking at each of these, you know, all of these components have a build and a run script. So looking at the build run script, you see you do a WASMR deploy, and that actually will log you into the, their server and deploy it. Um, all of these engines support multiple languages. Uh, in WASMIR, it's really kind of drop in support of multiple languages. And so in this case, I'm actually using Python. And then, you know, I'm listening. Um, I'm listening and sending messages from Python. So you can check this source out, but that's the idea of that. And then, likewise, you issue a um, WASMIR run command and we're passing in with all of them we're passing in the environment variables for the ports etc and connect to oracle database kafka mongo and rest okay moving on to the third engine was in time this is another uh, rust implementation and um so we can see here the dependencies here we're using uh if i'm saying this correctly wacky um uh, unlike you know we were using uh, Tokyo, Tokyo and Hyper with uh, Wasm Edge. We're using Wacky here, you know, just to, to, again, to show different variations, right? Different languages running in a container, running not. Uh, and so that's what's going on there. And then this is the implementation. A lot of this logic is, you know, for the game bookkeeping as well. Um, but you can take a look at this to see uh, how it's done with Wacky. And um, so here's the build file for that. This is the only one, I believe the, uh, this is the only one I'm using uh, WASI P2. So this is using the component model. Um, so that's a little different. So that's also interesting to look at. So lots of variations, like I say, languages, frameworks, uh, libraries, uh, WASI P1 and WASI P2. So that's that. Now let's move on to the Spring Boot implementation. And for that, um, let me close these out just to make it clearer. I want to show two aspects, um, and that's you know the Mongo aspect and the Kafka aspect, as access aspect. So here we have a Mongo repo, and um, you know just like any other Spring Data JPA or whatever uh, repo, 
But uh, this is a, like I say, it's a manga repo, but it's actually accessing uh, Oracle. And this is the same data, like I say, that's being accessed with SQL. And it's being accessed, um, actually it's being accessed via REST because anything in Oracle database you can access with REST, but the REST is accessing a SQL table, a relational table. And that same table can be accessed with the Mongo API via this feature called JSON duality. So in the SQL, I'll pop over to SQL real quick. Um, we see the player info, the WASI cycle set up for messaging, and the player info. And in this player info, we see a table, and then we see that we created a relational duality view. Super simple one. But that's how we're able to expose that not only in relational, but in JSON so that we can access it with this Mongo DB API. And so you can just take your Mongo app and you know use the repos or whatever you're using as is, but you point it to the Oracle database. So here's your repo configuration, but this is actually pointing to an Oracle database, the Mongo URL. Same Mongo URL um, format and everything, it's just pointing to an Oracle database. So that's Mongo, which we're using for player info and leaderboards. And then on to Kafka, same deal. We have the um, Kafka config, just like you normally would, but you, in addition to all the normal serializer bootstrap and all that, your properties include the database address. And that's what this TNS admin and alias are. So you take your Kafka app, you bring it over, you just point it at the Oracle database, and now you have messaging using transactional event queues, which have been in the database forever, for like 20, 30 years, the same way you use your Kafka. So that's the config, and then looking at the app, same idea, Kafka listener, consumer. Uh, one really cool thing to notice though, an additional feature, you're using Kafka as you normally would, but you can actually also call this very special API, which is get JDBC connect or get DB connection from the Kafka consumer or producer, whatever the case may be. And any actions you do on this database connection are in the same local transaction as your messaging operation, your consume or produce. So that's super powerful to eliminate uh, duplicate message delivery or message loss. Um, so you don't have to worry about handling item potents yourself and all that stuff. Super powerful. I don't actually use it in this game yet. I use it in my other applications if you want to check out the repos. Uh, but that's something to point out because with that database connection, you can do all your vector searches, um, create embeddings, all your spatial activity. Well, I'll be adding spatial stuff to this game in the next blog. Um, but yeah, really cool. So that is a quick run through of all the components. I think I covered everything here. And as I say, I'll be posting the blog uh, that goes into these details a bit more. Um, that should be published you know, within the week or two at latest. So thank you for your time. I'll see you later.